So now let us look at a very uh, popular uh, second order uh, statistical experimental design based on the second order model. So this is the central composite uh, design. You can see that we have a square here. We are talking about two factors, two variables. So you have a regular 2 power 2 uh, design, two factors in two levels. So you have four settings. So this constitutes the square, low, low, and then uh, you also have high, high, and so on. So you have an experimental design involving a 2 power 2 factorial design. In addition to that, you have the axial points. Uh, you can see this is the uh, first axial point, second axial point, third axial point, and fourth axial point. Uh, the first, second, third and fourth are uh, given in arbitrary fashion. So you have four runs, 2 power 2, then you have 2k axial uh, points where k is the number of factors. So you have again uh, four uh, axial points that makes it a total of 8. But that is not all, you also have the center point which is the uh, geometric center of the design. I said earlier that uh, the repeats may be performed at the uh, factorial points or at the center points. So you here you can have 4 or 5 repeats uh, for your experiment. This is a very uh, interesting and uh, very commonly used uh, design for experiments. There is a lot of flexibility where you want to locate your axial point. You may want to locate it uh, either uh, further or close to the factorial design depending upon your requirements. What those requirements are and how do you shift them, you will uh, learn when you do a formal course on the design of experiments. So why do we require the uh, runs at the center? They may represent uh, the repeats, okay, uh, rather than repeating the experiments at all the uh, factorial points and this may become very uh, expensive, especially when you have a large number of factors. Doing experiments at the uh, center of the design space is convenient as the center of the design space is some kind of representation of the overall design. It also represents an important augmentation to the factorial design and uh, it uh, tells whether there is a curvature in the uh, experimental response. Okay. Sometimes uh, there can be only linear variation with the factors, but sometimes uh, if there is interaction between the factors, then you have a curvature or a twist in the planar response curve. Uh, it may not be uh, planar or uh, it may not be simple, but there may be some kind of curvature. So to detect this curvature, you need the center points. How the center points help you to detect curvature is beyond the scope of this introduction lecture. So the center points help to detect the uh, second order or curvature effects, the quadratic terms. It helps to identify whether that beta 1 1 plus beta 2 2 is significant or not. But it does not help you to estimate individually beta 1 1 and beta 2 2. Where did this beta 1 1 and beta 2 2 come from? Let us go back to the model. If you are having only two factors, then I said you will have beta 1 1 x 1 squared plus beta 2 2 x 2 squared. These represent the uh, quadratic terms and also responsible for the curvature in addition to the interaction terms. Okay. So to find the beta 1 1 and uh, beta 2 2, you require uh, center points. Even though you may not be able to find out explicitly beta 1 1 and beta 2 2, at least it will tell you whether beta 1 1 plus beta 2 2 is overall significant or insignificant. If beta 1 1 plus beta 2 2 is insignificant, then both the beta 1 1 and beta 2 2 are not required to be present in the model. What is the contribution from the axial points? The axial points contribute to the estimation of the individual pure quadratic fx significance. Okay. If the axial points were not present, only the sum of the quadratic term significance could be gauged using the center points. This is pretty straightforward. The axial points do not contribute to the estimation of the interaction effects. The center points and the axial points contribute to the flexibility of the central composite design. Now we come into the final topic, response surface uh, methodology. Many uh, industries uh, want to optimize their uh, processes, but they do not know where to start and where to end. 
and uh, it is not appropriate especially in the industry to embark on a grand uh, exploratory uh, voyage in the n dimensional space hoping to sight the promised land uh, sometime or the other what is important is uh, first to do a set of screening experiments where uh, you have a preliminary set of experiments and assess the overall trend and the response surface methodology then enables you to identify the direction in which you should uh, proceed in other words it points to the direction where you should uh, set your experimental uh, factors so that uh, you are progressing in the correct direction okay suppose the goal of your process is to optimize then the response surface methodology will tell you the direction where the process will be uh, increasing or the process response will be increasing in the fastest manner this is very useful it uh, helps you to decide and plan your next level of experiments so in any experimental work an important objective would be to identify optimal levels of the various factors which will maximize minimize a suitable objective for example reaction yield conversion process time energy consumed etc so your objective function may be either uh, minimum or uh, maximum so you have to uh, proceed in such a manner that you go to the correct desired condition so the current level of operation may be usually far away from the optimum and we cannot uh, afford to wander in the wilderness of the n dimensional experimental variable space hoping to eventually reach the optimum response surface methodology deals with identifying optimum settings of the factors in a systematic manner so as i said earlier uh, the response surface methodology uh, helps you to find uh, quickly in which direction the process is uh, increasing the fastest if the increase in the process response is what you want so if you consider a case involving two variables x1 and x2 the method of steepest uh, ascent and optimization tool helps you to uh, know the direction in which the responses are increasing in the fastest possible manner and this is directly shown in terms of the green arrow for this particular case so when you have uh, two factors this is the form of the uh, uh, equation the true response involving the random error component and this is the model which is being proposed and you have to estimate the beta not hat and then the remaining parameters beta hat 1 beta hat 2 beta hat 1 2 corresponding to the interaction beta hat 1 1 and beta hat 2 2 the last two uh, corresponding to the quadratic terms again we can use uh, linear algebraic uh, techniques uh, in order to uh, identify the optimum conditions so in order to find uh, the uh, stationary points the so called stationary points you have to uh, partially differentiate your uh, proposed model with respect to x1 and x2 and set them to zero solve the resulting systems of equations and or system of equations and identify the uh, stationary conditions to do this uh, would be quite tedious especially when you are having uh, many factors we may as well use the linear algebra techniques for which several tools are available uh, at present for example matlab scilab and so on or there's no big deal in writing your own program if you are in having inclination towards that okay so coming back to our uh, response surface methodology approach we can represent the second order model in matrix notation as shown here beta not uh, hat plus x prime b plus x prime b x and uh, the stationary point of the solution can be obtained by differentiating this uh, in matrix terms to get uh, b plus 2 b x and we get uh, the stationary conditions by equating this uh, to zero again uh, all the bold terms indicates that they are vectors and matrices and not uh, regular uh, usual uh, scalars so what is the form of the x uh, vector the b matrix and the small b vector we came across uh, all these in this equation 
So we have to identify the form for all these. So you have x as the vector comprising of the uh, uh, different factors starting from x1 so on to xk. Then you have the B matrix given in terms of these uh, coefficients and uh, what is this beta hat 1 1? I already told you what is beta hat 1 1. So this is beta hat 1 1, beta hat 2 2. So you can easily show that this is the form of the uh, model. It might be interesting uh, for you to find out why some of these uh, terms in the capital B matrix are divided by 2. So I think uh, it is worth the effort to find out the reason. I leave it to you. Then you have the uh, B matrix which is again uh, comprising of the parameters to be estimated and it is given in this particular form. So when we want to uh, use this uh, matrix method, we solve this particular equation and uh, then we identify the stationary conditions in a very simple way minus half times the B inverse times the small b vector. Okay. So that will give us the stationary conditions and then using those stationary conditions we can uh, give the estimated predicted value of y by using this uh, relationship. So whether the uh, optimum obtained is uh, maxima or a minima you can um, again use or resort to linear algebra tools. We can check the eigenvalues of the uh, capital B matrix. So we find the eigenvalues of this matrix and uh, if the eigenvalues are all positive uh, then the stationary point uh, in the region of explanation uh, is a minimum. If the eigenvalues are negative then we have hit upon the maximum. Again there will be some complications when you have one eigenvalue and uh, which is positive and another eigenvalue which is negative. I will not get into these complications but I think there is sufficient uh, unexplored uh, uncharted territory uh, as far as uh, the student is concerned which he can uh, get into and uh, learn at his own pace. So we are coming to the end of the introductory uh, series of uh, lectures. It has been a real uh, pleasure to uh, talk about the uh, various concepts associated with the design of experiments. I did not only focus on the various uh, experimental designs because I felt uh, to appreciate and understand uh, the uh, experimental design and also to understand and analyze and present the results from the experimental design concepts uh, proper uh, introduction into the basics uh, of statistics and probability uh, is also necessary. So I covered a lot of ground uh, talking about normal distribution, the uh, random variable, the um, sampling distributions of the means, the chi-square distribution, the f distribution, the hypothesis testing concepts. Believe me, all these will come in your design of experiments analysis and knowing them would be a good investment uh, so that you can better appreciate the design of experiments concepts. I have also given NPTEL lectures on this uh, fascinating subject. You are uh, welcome to look at that for getting further uh, information and uh, understanding on this fascinating subject. Thanks for your attention.